In a previous video I showed you how to integrate 1 over any quadratic function and in this video we're going to extend that to doing 1 over the square root of any quadratic function again through a series of examples. What we did before was to complete the square and then use some integration technique, maybe it was an arctan integral, perhaps we did it in partial fractions. We're going to do the same sort of thing here, we're always going to start by completing the square and then uh, we'll find a way to integrate um, what we uh, have. So, best to see just all the different ways you can do it through examples that all end up being very similar uh, sort of techniques. So, firstly here we just note that we've got minus x squared minus 6x, uh, so this is 1 divided by the square root of 9 minus x minus 3 squared dx completing the square. Notice although it looks like this is negative everywhere, so maybe this is complex value or something. Actually when you complete the square you see it's uh, got some uh, values of x where it's positive, it's not negative uh, everywhere, although we do have to uh, consider that we are only on a restricted uh, domain here, there are some values of x uh, for which this would be negative and we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't want to be doing an integral with uh, those limits here. But I'm not going to worry too much about that in this video, I'm just going to do the technique for actually doing the integration. So, um, as before, uh, we'll make a substitution here, so u equals x minus 3 turns this into 1 divided by the square root of 9 minus u squared du. And um, then we can make another substitution, so I can say uh, u equals 3v, and that makes this 1 over the square root of 9 minus 9v squared times 3 dv and we see that the 3 cancels with uh, the square root of 9, that's a factor of the denominator here, so this is just 1 over 1 minus v squared square rooted dv. And at this point you might just recognize this uh, as the derivative of arc sine uh, of v, uh, but if you don't you could make a further substitution and say v equals sine w, so dv by dw equals cos w, so this integral becomes the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus sine squared w cos w dw, and then we've got 1 minus sine squared is cos squared, so the square root of cos squared is cos, so they cancel, so I have 1 uh, dw here, so that's just w plus c, which is uh, arc sine of v. So this integral is arc sine of v plus c, I just need to unpick this integral, then we've got v equals u over 3 and u equals uh, x minus 3, so this is arc sine x minus 3 over 3 plus c. This might look a little bit complicated, like we've had to do loads of substitutions to get to the answer here, uh, but in practice, you know, the, they're all very similar, these sorts of examples. Um, so it becomes a reasonably routine thing, uh, but also if you're doing this in an exam where you have access to a table of integrals, um, then you'll have this result here available to you that says that 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared dx is arc sine x over a, essentially because you can always make this sort of argument. Uh, so you could just say actually when you get to, uh, to this step here, uh, use the formula uh, here from a formula book and say okay I can just see that a is 3 here and we've got u is x uh, so that one then is arc sine u over 3 plus c and u is x minus 3 so we're done right and we get the same answer. Here's the next example already in completed square form um, 2 uh, x plus 5 square plus 50 all square rooted and uh, I'm going to start by, as we did before, pulling out the root 2 here so that I've got a nice monic uh, quadratic here. And if we then substitute u equals x plus 5, this becomes 1 over root 2 times the integral of 1 over the square root of u squared minus 25 du. And so we can now either go through that whole process of making further substitutions, uh, say uh, u equals 5v here, and then we could um, use some sort of trig or hyperbolic substitution. Here we'd actually want to use cosh uh, to do the substitution, and it would and it would work out exactly as it did in the previous example, pretty much. But we don't want to be doing that, you know, every time when we do loads of these. So I'm going to assume you've got this formula book: 1 over root x squared minus a squared 
dx is arc cosh x over a. You can have access to that result somewhere. Perhaps let me just let me just look up which one we want. We can see we've got exactly that with um, a equals five here. So this is one over the square root of two uh, r cosh u over five plus c. And then we just remember that u is x plus five. So we've got x plus 5 over 5 plus c. And that's the final answer. This is my last example then. 1 over the square root of 3x minus 4 squared plus 21 dx. Again, it's already in complete square form. If it wasn't, we would put it into that form. Uh, I'm going to start by taking out the factor of 3, or the square root of 3 here, and writing the integral like this. If we substitute u equals x minus 4, that becomes 1 over root 3, 1 over the square root of u squared plus 7 du. And then our table of integrals tells us that 1 over the square root of x squared plus a squared is uh, integrates to r shine of x over a. So we have exactly that here with a equals the square root of 7 and u in place of x, so this is 1 over the square root of 3 times r shine u divided by the square root of 7 plus c, and we remember that u was x minus 4, so this is 1 over root 3 r shine x minus 4 over root 7 plus c. And now you may have noticed that each of those three examples was of a slightly different completed square forms. So in the first one here we had a number minus x minus a number squared and that led to an arc sine uh, answer. In the second one we had the x part squared minus a number and that led to an arc cosh in the answer and the final one we had the x part uh, plus a constant, and that led to an R shine answer. And the fourth case, I suppose, would be uh, to go back to the uh, first example and have minus a number here, minus the x part squared. But in that case, we'd have a negative number minus something squared. So what's in the square root here would be negative and would be in uh, the territory of something which is complex valued. Uh, so in the context of, of the integration we're doing here, that's something, uh, that's a case that we uh, don't need to consider. So the three different cases that we uh, can sensibly have for a real valued integral here is uh, are the three that we've considered. And so we can be confident that we can integrate any function of this form one over uh, the square root of a, a quadratic uh, where it's uh, sensible to do that integral. And from the previous video we can also do one over uh, any quadratic. So we're really expanding our tools for integration here.